This video looks at a fairly tricky example of geometric sequences. We know the second term and the sum to infinity. And the question says to find a and then r. Now for the second term we know generally that a n is a times r to the n minus 1. So if we know the second term is 6 then 6 must equal a times r. Now the 6 occurs when n is 2, it's the second term. So let n equal 2, 2 take away 1 is 1. So 6 equals a times r. That's equation 1. We also know the sum to infinity is 25. Now generally a infinity equals a over 1 minus R. So, if we know that the sum to infinity is 25, then 25 must equal a over 1 minus r. So, we have two separate equations there to use, and somehow we must solve them together to find a and r. Right, in the first equation, if I were to let r equals 6 over a. So I've rearranged that first equation. And for the second equation, I'm going to times up by 1 minus r. So I get 25 bracket 1 minus r equals a. If I then expand this, 25 minus 25r equals a, then I can replace this r in the second equation by 6 over a. So this tells me that 25 minus 25 lots of 6 over a must equal a. So this r here has been replaced by 6 over a. So I can do two things here. I can work out what 25 times 6 is, which is 150. So 25 minus 150 over a equals a. I can then times up by the a to get 25a minus 150 equals a squared. Right then, almost there. This can then be rearranged to get a squared minus 25a plus 150 equals 0. So 0 equals a squared minus 25a plus 150. So we've now got this down to a, a quadratic equation which factorises to a minus 10 and a minus 15. So therefore a equals 10 or a equals 15. There are two distinct sequences, one which begins at 10 and another which begins at 15. And then if we know what a is, we can find r, because r equals 6 over a. So when a is 10, r equals 6 over 10. Or if a is 15, r equals 6 over 15. So there we go. Two pairs of values for a and for r.